close up with admire. Where we'll be unmasking issues closely to know more about God. Knowing more about business. Knowing more about talents. Knowing more about societies around and beyond. Asking uncommon questions. Sharing tips. Sharing joy. Sharing information. Admire Manyange, a public speaker, musician, and entrepreneur. Subscribe to AD Media SA YouTube channel so that you don't miss an episode. Close Up Talk Show is proudly brought to you by AD Media in association with the following companies appearing on your screen. Hello and welcome to Close Up. Today we're going to know more about why many people are not receiving from God. Yes, why you are not receiving from God. And today we have a very special guest all the way from South Africa. He's a multi-skilled, multi-talented, and also an anointed man of God. He's a founder and senior pastor of Grace Link Church in Centurion, also an entrepreneur, a producer, a musician, and a singer. Please, ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Pastor Tulani. Pastor Tulani, it's good to have you on the show. Great, thank you very much for having me on the show. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Um, you know, each time I see you, I just, I'm tempted to just ask you to sing, I'm a testimony, hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know what? I have to be disciplined. I have to get into the subject of the day first, and then we're going to talk about music. Um, Pastor, uh, you see, many people, uh, when they come across a passage like the passage I came across in the book of Matthew chapter 7, which reads, Ask and it shall be given, seek and you will find, knock and it shall be opened. The first thing that comes into mind is, what is it that I must ask? As in, what should I, or how do I know that I have this? And this I don't, so I must ask for this. How do you really define what you haven't received and what you've already received? I think, uh, I think it's a very beautiful passage of scripture. Um, that question you're asking is very interesting because it is a common question amongst believers. Um, but that question also says um, a lot about the new believer who says, boom, I'm saved. So what for me? <laughs> you understand? And it's a right question to ask because then... Uh, every child in the house needs to know what their inheritance is. But I think it's very important that we need to understand the will of the Father. Because when you ask, you need to ask knowing that you are asking according to the will of the Father. Unless we ask amiss. You understand? That's why even when we pray, the, you know, the Bible mm -hmm. says we don't know how to pray. But the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. You know, So we need to know that which we are asking is it in the will of the Father? for me you understand that's why uh, and speaking speaking of the will pastor yes. I, I know there's a, 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 a i think can you shed more light on the will what is the will of god and how does one know that okay what i'm now asking is off the will of god or this is in the will of god the bible says everything works together for good to them that love the lord and accord according to his purpose so there is a purpose, and that purpose is the will of the Father. You understand? So your purpose is the will of the Father for your life. My purpose is the will of the Father for my life. You, are, you, you understand? I mean, the word will, when you look at it in, in simple secular terms, if, if, if someone was to die today, they would write a will. So a will basically says, this is how I intend for things to be distributed. This is how I intend for things to happen. 
So the Father has also written a will, and that will is our purpose. What your purpose is, what my purpose is, becomes the will of the Father. So in as much as it might not be similar, but we have to come to a point where we understand that we do not just uh, operate as we please, as we want. We just I can just wake up and be anything I want to be. God has purposed for me uh, to, to be something. I mean, the Bible says... Uh, we, we should not be conformed to the mm -hmm. world, but we should be transformed by the renewing of our mind so that we know God's perfect will. You understand? So that we know that mm -hmm. perfect will of mm -hmm. the Father. So we need our minds to be transformed, mm -hmm. you know, so that it, mm -hmm. it conforms to God. Then we know what God intends for okay. our lives. Yes. So so that's the qualification. So, okay, I think... I think I think that the, 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 if I'm getting you correctly, there must be the transformation of the mind so that one can realize their purpose. But I think I think I would need you to explain in depth how the transformation and most importantly, how one should or in how one can get to identify their purpose, because that's one area that is uh, maybe uh a lot are struggling to figure out but please yes, stay yes. with us pastor viewers don't go anywhere uh, shortly after this break pastor he's going to explain further on how to identify your purpose and also the transformation of the mind to go according to the will of god stay with us we'll be back shortly after this break Close Up Talk Show is proudly brought to you by AD Media in association with the following companies appearing on your screen. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's good to have you. It's so good to have you, Pastor Tulani, Amen. in the studio. Amen. Wonderful. Um, um, Pastor, you were just explaining before we went on a short break just now about um, how people uh, must ask from God, that they must ask in the will of God, and that there must be the transformation of the mind. Please do help us and explain further how one can identify their purpose and how they can, um, you know, effectively uh, transform their mind. I, th I, th I think importantly, maybe just to make this quickly, uh, to make this diff to, to make this easier to to understand. The first thing we need to understand is that salvation is a spiritual process. So when I get saved today, it's my spirit that is saved, you know. And man is made of the spirit, the soul, and and this live in the body. So when I get saved today, my spirit is saved. It does not mean automatically that my mind is changed. You understand? So I've got to be deliberate about changing my mind, you know, so that I can then say, okay, what is godly and what is not? And how then do I transform myself from what was not godly to what now is godly? And for me to do that, I mean, importantly, first thing, I need to dip myself in the word so that then I can know from the word what is it that is intended for me as a believer? What is it that is intended for me as 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 Christ that lives in me. How would Christ live? So from that point, already I start to, to, to change how I think. Why? Because even the Bible says that, you know, uh, the foolish man said in his heart, there is no God. But this man didn't say it in his heart only. He's, he must have thought it. So it means that the mind can also be interchanged as the heart. You understand? So... A man has to change his heart about certain things. A man has to decide. It's a voluntary action. I have to decide that, look, I want to change how I've looked at things. I want to change how I've thought about certain things. And then from that point, then I say, Holy Spirit, help me. Mm. So that I can transform myself to what God intends of me. At that point, then the Holy Spirit starts to show me what is for me, what I'm supposed to be, my, 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 my plan on this earth, which basically is my purpose. So the Holy Spirit tells you you've wasted 20 years of your life uh, 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 as an engineer. God has intended for you to be a preacher. Or you've mm -hmm. wasted five years of your life uh, as whatever, and you're supposed so, to be this. Yes, sir. Uh, pastor, uh, 
I, 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 I am following, and, and thank you so much for shedding that light. But, okay, here's a scenario of one believer yes. who is watching us right now and has been saved already. The transformation of mind has taken place, but there are certain things they're asking from God. Some they have already been told, uh, give this or give a car, you're going to receive 10 cars, and they haven't received anything yet. Would you kindly share why or how, maybe in that instance, why possibly an individual would not have received, having listened or having given some money in church? What could be your uh, explanation for that? I think, I think the first thing is we need to define blessing because that's where the mistake is. That's where the confusion is made of God. Where people have come to believe that the blessing is material. So the blessing is what I can touch. So anytime I want something, I must invest for it. <laughs> Do you understand that? Because if blessing is material, it's, it's my jacket today. But tomorrow, if I want a tie, then I have to do something else to get the tie. But the blessing is not actually uh, in the proceeds of blessing. Blessing is not the result of blessing. Blessing is blessing. What blessing is? Blessing is... It is an ability, you know. The Bible says, "Honor the Lord with 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 your wealth and everything." For it is Him that gives you the ability to make wealth. So blessing is ability, and you know you'll be shocked to realize that this ability has been given to every believer. And I mean, when he said to Adam, he said, "Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth, and have dominion." You understand? So that was given to Adam. And when Jesus came, Jesus came to restore us to what we were before the fall. So it means that we are in that place. So the ability, the the, the, the ability you're speaking of, Pastor, here is, is exactly what I, is uh, causing a bit of some <laughs> confusion in many believers that they... They believe if they give and if they believe if they give money or actually most people have given their money, they've given things, their possessions, and they still don't or they haven't received anything as of now, but they have been giving some maybe for two, three years, it you would, know, it would, some it would, maybe last week. <laughs> it, would, it would interest you to note that nowhere in scripture did Jesus teach about seed and he put money in place of seed. Nowhere in scripture is seed exemplified as money. And now that's, that's, that's very interesting. <laughs> Do you understand? So the reason is because, the reason is because, you see, when God says, I will bless the works of, her, of your hands, God is saying, I will multiply on what you have invested. Do you understand? So when we give, there, there, there is two very important qualifications when you give to the poor and you give to the widows. The Bible says you have lend, you are lending to God. You understand? So God basically gives you that back. That's that's one part where Scripture says you give and 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 and, and you get back. You understand? But the, the principle of sowing and harvesting it's 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 a biblical principle that doesn't change. However, you need to realize that. When you plant mango today, you reap mango tomorrow, isn't it? When you plant apple, you reap apple. The challenge with believers is in our giving, we expect one thing and we give another. That's one problem. The other challenge is also with ministers because we do have people that are enterprising in the kingdom. <laughs> you understand? In the gospel, basically. They want to make money. So they will basically say, for anything that you want, put a monetary seed. Mm. You understand? And there's no principle like that even in the word of God. The Bible says, give and it shall be given. Give and it wow. shall be given. What does it mean? It means that which you gave, that thing, it, give and it shall be given. That thing that you gave, it shall be given back to you. You understand? So if I... Mm. Mm. Speaking of enterprises, that's a very that's a very interesting one. I, I really want to ask <laughs> you more questions on that. But stay with us. Uh, viewers, don't go anywhere. We're going to talk about enterprises in, <laughs> in, in, in the ministry. Just shortly after this break, we're going to talk more about that. Pastor Kilani, thank you. So don't go anywhere. Stay with us.
Close Up Talk Show is proudly brought to you by AD Media in association with the following companies appearing on your screen. Welcome back to our third and final segment here with Pastor Tulani, live from South Africa in Centurion, and he's still explaining to us why many, many, many of us are not receiving from God. And before we went on a break, there's something interesting that Pastor Tulani just highlighted, that there are some guys that are enterprising. That term is a strong term, Pastor. Enterprising. Tell us. Um, I know of uh, certain people that are saying, this needs to be purchased for you to receive a miracle or buy this, buy that, things like that. Can you shed more light about, uh, you know, uh, how things must be sold for one to receive from God? It, it happens in any, in any kingdom, in any um, environment. Um, you see, uh, that's, that's why the Bible says, for, 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 for my people perish because of lack of knowledge. Now, this is very important. I, I'll give a very mm -hmm. simple example. Um, when you go to the home affairs, uh, you, you are going to sign the, some documents and things like that. If you are not aware that you're supposed to go with a pen, with a black pen, and you leave your house without a black pen, you will pass the shop on the road and the black pen is 10 rand. When you get there, you might find them selling a black pen for 50 rand. At that point in time, your choices are limited, you understand, mm -hmm. because you need the pen. We have a, a group of, uh, of, of, of Christians today that have not transformed, number one, their mind. Number two, they have not known their purpose. So anything that you bring to them is gospel. Anything that says it shall be all right is good news. And that's the reason why there are people that prey on those people. People that take advantage of that and say, okay, because you don't know, you don't know that you can pray for yourself. So I will pray for you. So you need to fuel me. You need to do this. You need to do that. I am not saying that men of God do not play a role. You understand? But we need to understand that the most important relationship is my relationship with God. So I have got to understand what God thinks about me, what God says about me. You understand? So that the entrepreneurs do not prey on us. They are entrepreneurs. Trust me, they are. Why? Because, I mean, it's a very lucrative business. You understand? And then the other thing is, with certain ministries, you find that they do uh, sell uh, merchandise for, 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 for fundraising and, uh, for, and whatever reason. And some ministries will explain to you that, no, we're selling T-shirts because we are trying to raise money. We are selling this and that and all that. But other ministers as well will now take that just as a commercial exercise. You understand? And they make money out of it. And I do not blame those that are doing it. I blame those that are buying because if no one was buying, nobody would sell. So I think I think that's that's the basis, you know, to say and, okay. and it's it's Maybe. always been there. It's always been there, even in biblical times. Uh huh. Yeah, Jesus went into the church and whipped them the other time. Ah, uh, yeah, that's exactly the example I actually wanted to point out. But but there's another <laughs> portion of scripture in the Bible that says, Pastor, um, there was a man. Uh, uh, named Naaman who had leprosy and uh, he came to the prophet and and I won't say the whole story but in short the guy wanted to offer some gifts and the prophet refused I don't know maybe it's if you can shed more light some people actually point that as a reference to say men of God are actually supposed to not <laughs> collect things uh, I, I, can you explain maybe it's the lack of knowledge why some would take stuff but the prophet, they refused. You see, the, the, the Bible the Bible provides historical, it provides futuristic, it, it, provides, it, it provides current guidelines. So when we read the Bible, we need to have an understanding, you know, of, of certain portions of scripture. For example, we cannot take that isolated uh, single case and say, then that's the basis for, for that reason. Um, I mean, priests and prophets should not take gifts. Do you understand? At some point, Paul says mm -hmm. to them, um, I, I deprived you of the opportunity to be blessed, blessed because I refused for you to give to me. And he says that to some church. So we can never really take 
um, take those isolated examples and then use them as a basis. I, I, I do think that according to, 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 to the spirit of God and the prophet, according to what God has said to the prophet, if God intends for him to take gifts, there, there, there is nothing wrong with that. You, you understand? But understand that with, with gifts that are in the name of God, there is a danger. There was a time that Gehazi took a gift for the prophet, for Elisha, and Elisha had not instructed him to take the gift. You understand? And it became a problem because of that. So certain people have died because they have they have used the name of the Lord in vain and some people have abused um, some privileges and power and all that. So the same applies to the current church. You understand? If God has not instructed you to take gifts, why take them? And if God has said you can take, then you can. But understand that it must not be an entrepreneurial activity. It's not a commercial activity. So if I charge you to come less see than, me... In, in less than two minutes, Pastor, we're just about to close. This is our last segment. Can you just maybe yes. state... Just, just, just state a few key things that our viewers here and myself can learn on how to receive from God. Can you just maybe state the ways of maybe how people can receive from God? Let's say they're praying for something or believing God for a miracle. Is there some sort of a guideline or maybe scripture references that you can give? If your faith as small as a mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, be removed and be cast down into the sea, and it shall be done for you. So faith is uh, if, if, if number one principle, qualifying factor. Faith is the mm -hmm. substance of mm -hmm. things hoped for, things not there. So I've got to hope for it even though I don't see it. Then that's number one. Number two, we've got to work it. You understand? Because he blesses the works of my hands. So number one, I must believe. Number two, I must work. You understand? Number mm -hmm. three, if the Bible says, for we are more than conquerors, you do not conquer if you did not enter the race. So I've got to be there. You understand? If I'm trusting God for business breakthrough, I must have registered a business. You understand? So we must take the first step and then allow God to, 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 to chip in. You understand? I think we do have a challenge with Christians who sit down, do nothing and say, God, come in, help me. So faith, number one, number two, we have got to. We have got to, we, we, we have got to work it. Number three, we have got to take the first step. Number four, very importantly to receive from God, we have got to be well positioned in God. One of the reasons why we don't receive from God is we can't hear God. Why are we not hearing him? Because of sin. So I need to try and make sure that I push myself away from sin because sin pushes me away from God. So I need to try as much as possible and say, Lord, help me. Holy Spirit, help me. I do not want to sin because it's going to hinder me from receiving from you. Number five, last and, and, and I think also very important to receive from God. We must know our purpose. I think it's the first thing that we said, we must know our purpose. Because then if my purpose is to become a business person and I'm asking God for a breakthrough in getting a job. I might not get the job because God has intended for me to get into business. So I should know my purpose. Then I can ask according to my purpose. That way we receive. So very important. Yes. Profound, profound. Thank you so much, Pastor, for your time. I really appreciate. And thank you so much again to our viewers who have tuned in today. If you think this video can help somebody, don't hesitate. Click the share button, send it to them. Let them get assistance and know why they haven't received from God. Till we meet again. Bye -bye.